So, work ethic, overcoming adversity. Work ethic will take you much farther than your innate abilities. So your coaches, I see a bunch of athletes here, I know your coaches will tell you, ability gets you so far. The ability plus a work ethic is what makes you succeed. Ms. Hardyman, I'm gonna open it up for questions. Anybody? Yes. They did, that was not an option for us. Mm -hmm. Correct, yeah. It, it was brought up. I mean, it was discussed, but that's not the way we, I was raised or Danielle's mom was raised. She was not raised that way either. So that was not really an option, but they were around. So yes, they were. What else you got? Nobody has any questions. Gosh, last time I did this. Is I think they just wanted out of class last time and they just asked for lots of questions. Oh gosh, I, now this was, this was almost, this was 30 years ago, so. Um, I don't know, I didn't get paid by the hour, I got paid by what I got done. So I made more than most people because I worked harder. Um, but it wasn't much, let's say, maybe eight or nine dollars an hour, something like that, minimum. That's an interesting, so I've, I've had a, an interesting journey in my, in my educational career. So I was a teacher for 20 years before I was a principal. So I taught first grade for two years, really littles, not my thing. So the school, interesting story with that, the school I worked at was a really old building and the, the floor looked like a checkerboard, it had white and black squares. And I was not, the typical first grade teacher. I don't want them around me, I don't want them hugging on me, I don't want you wiping your snot on me, you know, that sort of thing. So I had a rule. When kids came up to me, they had to look down. And if they weren't allowed on a square that was touching the one I was standing at, so they wouldn't be allowed there. They'd be allowed <coughs> there. And so then they go, you know, they'd take it away. So I taught first grade for two years, I taught third grade for two years, Eve's over here thinking I'm horrible now. I taught fifth grade for 10 years, then I taught seventh and eighth grade for six years. At that same time, I was also teaching college for 17 years. I was teaching English classes. And then I became a principal. So kind of an evolution of, of my career sort of thing. Yeah? What did Calvary want? I'm not going to tell you that. That's none of your beeswax. Although it is, uh, it is public knowledge. You could look it up. Not right now. Any questions about like like what it's like and like what you have to do to be a teacher or a, a principal or anything? <coughs> Nothing. Ms. Hardyman, do you have any questions? Um, you touched on work ethic mm -hmm. throughout. Can you share with them what you feel the most beneficial thing to having an effective work ethic? Well, first of all, in order to have a work ethic, you have to not ta ever take the easy way out. So like I said, we've got several basketball players in here. Um, if you just kind of half do it at practice, you're probably not going to get in the game. It's putting 100% effort as much as you can. Nobody can do, you, can, you know, I can do like a rah-rah speech and, and all that, but nobody can give 100% 100% of the time. You can't, it is not possible. And this is from somebody talking to you that regularly has 12 and 16 hour days, okay? You see me at all those basketball games, probably haven't gone home, okay? So you cannot do 100%, 100% of the time. What you have to do is decide what needs to be done first. What needs to be done first? What can be done tomorrow? What has to be done today? So time management is important. But work ethic is t also taking pride in what happens. I'm proud of the way you guys act. I'm proud of watching you guys play basketball or volleyball. I'm proud of watching the football team. I'm proud of watching the, the choir. I'm proud of watching the, the drama, the, the, the plays and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I enjoy watching that because I enjoy watching you guys take pride in what you do. 
And if you're not taking pride in what you do, whatever it is, whether you are a painter, maybe you compose music, maybe you're just awesome at Call of Duty, take pride in what you're good at and work on improving the things you're not. What I am not good at is saying no to people. <laughs> I, and I am not good at delegating. Maybe that's why I routinely work 12 and 16 hour days, because I refuse to let somebody else do it. Uh, there's a reason why, I don't know if you've noticed that I sub in your classes a lot, because I will never ask my teachers to do something I won't do myself. Or you guys, if I ask you to do something, take your hat off in the building, it's not because I'm asking you to, to I'm trying to tell you what to do and run your life. I'm trying to instill a sense of pride and discipline. And your parents instill that when you're younger, but the school has to continue with that. And if it doesn't, then, then things don't work as well. Yeah. I think that's kind of like a, a big one that I would do. About like what? having kids, you know, like I'm sure you have teachers talking bad about you. I didn't listen. Uh, I don't think a lot of when I was in high school, I'm not sure a lot of people knew because I hate to put it this way, that people would have been, by the time I graduated, people knew. But in the 180 kids in my graduating class, I would have probably been one of the last ones ever anybody would have thought that would have happened. So I don't think a lot of people knew because I didn't tell anybody. I mean, my best friends knew. <coughs> Um, it, and the school I went to is kind of weird. I was sure they would, and, the, and I guess the easy part was my girlfriend at the time did not go to the school. She had already graduated. So had she been there, yeah, there would have been a lot of gossip and all that. But that was so long ago, I barely remember that. So if you didn't hear, the question was, do I consider myself a laid back principal? Probably. Um, and have there been times that I've gone easy on somebody? Is that what you're asking? Um, that's a hard question to answer because every, when we're talking discipline, every situation is different. And you have to look at it regardless of whether that student has been in my office 15 times, that 16th time, is still the 16th time. Now, they've done the same thing 15 times. That's different. But situations are unique. And in my position, I don't deal a lot with the day-to-day -day discipline, Ms. Cooper does. So if I'm disciplining somebody, something severe happens. Um, and that's usually going to come with a more severe consequence. But when I was assistant principal at Sydney, it was every day. Every day, it was a revolving door. Every day, and I only had the discipline except for emergencies for fifth and sixth grade. And so you'd think fifth and sixth graders, no. I would have three kids, one in my office and two waiting for me in the lobby. Pretty much standard. Pretty much most of the day, not always. Seventh and eighth grade principal kind of had it a little worse. But, and it, it, but like I said, it all depends. If you end up in my office, if any of you end up in my office, it is, or anybody's office, whether you're in trouble, whether you're not in trouble, whether I'm just asking you because you're a witness or something, it is very important to be honest. And that's what I find here. I found it in Sydney too. So if you don't already know, I was principal and teacher in Sydney for 25 years before I came here last year. So kids in Sydney were honest. They were using, usually cussing and all wound up, but. But here, hey, you got that big? Yeah, yes. I mean, that's kind of what happens. You know, they know, if, if, if you're in my office, chances are I know you did it, and I'm gonna do something about it anyway. So you might as well be honest. So that's the same with Miss Cooper too, but what else? Doesn't have to be on, on my personal story. It can be anything. I mean, how often do you have your principal in front of you willing to answer any question you got? around here most of the time because I'll answer anything you guys have.
once it's not a burglary. Yeah? How big is your main job in this? In this job? Yeah. Like here? Yeah. Okay, so my main job, and, and I had a, a, a student ask me this before. So my main focus is on like the the day-to-day -day running of the building. So things like the budget and stuff like that, that's the boring stuff. My biggest, um, or in my opinion, the most important part of my job is working with teachers to improve instruction. And part of that is being in watching them, part of that is running the meeting, part of that is just having discussions with them. That is the most important part of my job. The other stuff can be done at any time. Does that make any sense? That's why, well, I spent first period in one class and second period in another class covering, either observing or covering classes because we don't have subs. So that's the important part. Uh, so Ms. Cooper's job is more the discipline, the day-to-day, -day, like the, the normal, you know, your tardy, this is your fifth tardy, here's your detention. Ms. Cooper handles a lot of that kind of thing. Can I answer your question? Okay. What else we got? Yes? How do you become a teacher? Well, you have to, anybody want to be a teacher? Anybody thinking they might want to be a teacher? It's not all roses and, and lilies, but you do get some time off in the summer. Right, Ms. Leafly? It was Hardy Monday. That's not they, all they, that's <laughs> correct. <laughs> you already know how, but. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the, you hear this a lot. Oh, your teachers, you get three months off. No, you don't. <laughs> first, that first couple weeks, you get to breathe, and then you start thinking about what's going to happen next. You know, what am I going to change in my instruction next year to improve the quality of education for my students? So, to be a teacher, you have to be, or you have to have a bachelor's degree, and you have to go through a, a teacher training program that does include student teaching. So, we have one, two, at least three student teachers in the building right now. Uh, one with Mr. Maley, one with uh, Ms. Mahaney and Ms. Rowans, and one with Mr. McCray. So they are at the end of their, their teacher training, so when they're finished here in May, they can start looking for jobs. So that's what you have to do. But you also, teachers, a lot of people that don't know, and, and you know, so I was a teacher for 20 years, Mrs. Barnes is a teacher been a teacher for seven years and she teaches in Vandalia and she teaches fourth and fifth grade special needs students. She has them all day every day. 14 kids all day. Same 14 kids all day. No break. So I mean she gets lunch and that sort of thing. But so um, where was I going with that? I don't know where I was going with that. Hold on let me let me backtrack. So a lot of people think if you're not around teachers like if you don't have parents that are teachers or you don't have aunts or uncles or friends or are around teachers, you think, oh, they show up at 720, do they leave at 3 or 250? They've got June, July, and August off, they get every holiday off, that'd be a sweet gig. Well, it is a sweet gig, but you don't get to do that. You know, teachers don't, they may come in at 720, they may leave at 250, but they're taking a bunch of stuff home to the dorm. Or they're not an effective teacher, and we don't have those. They, you may not see them in the building working necessarily before or after school, but there's no way to do the job as well as the teachers that we have in this building do if all you're doing is coming in at 720, leaving at 250, and now when I get done is what I get. Wait, we can come at 720? That's when you have to be here. <laughs> Ms. Hardyman 